Hey guys, this is Zach with Blade HQ. We're here at SHOT Show 2019. We're at the Spartan booth, and I'm sitting down with Tulan. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you guys might know too from the Forge and Fire stuff, but tell us a little about yourself. Uh, 23 years, Special Forces Green Beret. Uh, worked in multiple different uh, specialized units. So I recently retired and started a company called Ronin Tactics, where we specialize in uh, training major law enforcement, uh, developing gear, and along with that, while we're here today, I, I developed the, uh, along with my friends from Spartan Blades, we developed uh, the Shinto Blade. Shinto meaning the ways of the old to the ways of the new. Great, yeah, let's, uh, and run us through this new knife. There's been a lot of buzz about this thing. So when we started approaching a, a blade, I wanted a blade that was able to be a utility blade. That means as a Special Forces Green Beret, our blade, we have to be able to live off the land, be able to survive with it. So this blade, the geometry of this blade, is made to hack and chop uh, so you can build shelters, so you can make fires. So if you look at the downward uh, tip on this, the recurve, it allows it more of a, a chopping, uh, and hacking type of blade. This gives you the same, almost the same power of a small ax just because of the downward tip and the sloping of the blade. As you can see the contour of the blade here, it allows me to choke up on the blade. That means that I could choke up high on the blade and I could whittle away and hack at things a little bit more precise. Um, and that's huge when it, when it comes to making fires and building shelters. I talked to Curtis and I wanted to have a combat blade just because of uh, the current wars that's been going on. You know, we lived in the jungles of the Philippines to uh, different countries in Africa, and we utilize this knife for survival, but we also need to double up as a lethal fighting blade. What I look for in a fighting blade is the balance of the blade. So if you can see the balance of the blade is right at the fore guard of the blade. So that allows, the balance allows the blade to be able to spin and move in your hands like a fighting blade, right? Because everything is balanced on this blade. So we wanted a, a Makarta type of handle. We wanted a, a good grip and traction on this blade. So, so you're able to move and able to spin the blade. You're able to move into a reverse position, block. Um, so we needed a good grip on the blade. Also, I wanted to extend the handle just a little bit more here for first the bigger the bigger hand guys, but also if you look at it, this is used as a blunt tool. So if I if I need to strike, we need to parry, I need to cut, this allows that blunt tool. We put a um, we put a little hole in here so you can tie a lanyard to it if you need to. Um, the lanyard's really important in the jungles when you're hacking away at stuff. You don't want the blade to sling out of your hands. So once the hands get really uh, wet and slippery and the moisture uh, that we encounter usually in the jungles, we definitely want a lanyard on our, uh, on our blade. Now would you recommend for self-defense with a knife like this, would you recommend using a lanyard in that, those cases or no? Yeah, so I, this is made for self-defense, so this is my blade here, uh, and you notice how I take off the lanyard. Uh, just because I want the blade to the free flow in my hands. One of the things I need to do if I had a sidearm, if I'm, I'm utilizing a blade and I need to go to a medium range uh, lethality, then I could transfer the blade and move to my, uh, to my weak hand. So that allows the, the, the transfer from the blade to your weak hand if you need to. Yeah. It also allows the ability to throw the blade if I need to in a, in a combat situation. And uh, what type of sheath is this coming with? Okay, so initially, at first, we wanted to go with a regular nylon sheath. And the reason for this is, is we wanted to design a modern day Green Beret knife for the civilian sectors as well. So we know what's needed out of a lethality on a blade, and we know what's needed on the utility of a blade. Having worked in the jungles, we realized that leather sheaths and everything else, it, it seems to mold, it seems to break away uh, even the kydexes, uh, depending on different temperatures, working in amphibious environments, can mess up the, uh, the kydex. So we wanted to go with a very simple uh, sheath in the beginning. Notice the piles is lying on the outside. This is, allows you to add any molly type of single pouch to put a sharpening stone, to put a fire stick if you need to. If you look at the para cable lying on the, uh, on the back side here, you can adjust the length of where this 
this, uh, this sheath needs to be on your leg. Usually for me, I like to ride it really high on my hip line because moving in the jungles, you don't want anything on your, on your lower uh, thigh. So really simplistic in the beginning, um, a nylon sheath, it comes in coyote brown, it comes in multicam, it comes in black for now. Uh, also, uh, we're going to eventually release a leather type of sheath, uh, very much like the K-Bar traditional sheaths. Okay, yeah. So if you're not working in the jungles, the leather sheath should be great for a lot of other applications. Absolutely. Wonderful. And uh, this is all through Spartan Blades, right? Yes, this is through Spartan Blades. Uh, you can order this, the Shento blade through Spartan Blades uh, right now. The Ronin, uh, we're, we're going to make our, our special Ronin Tactics blade eventually with the uh, trainer, which uh, I'll be traveling around the United States this year, training on the application and lethality of this blade. Great. So if somebody's interested in taking one of your courses or, or linking up with you, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me at www.ronintactics.com. You can find us on Instagram at ronintactics.com and on Facebook at ronintactics.com. Great. And then uh, the final question we have for you, we've been asking everybody at SHOT Show, what do you have in your pocket today? <laughs> so I developed this blade um, along with Curtis. Uh, we wanted a Ronin type of folder that Bill uh, Hersley, who's a legend in the uh, knife industry has made. As you can see here, as our Ronin uh, symbol, well, I, what I like about this blade is his ability to switch. Um, you can see the clip, you can switch it to either side, so it's truly ambidextrous. The blade is well thought out, it's well balanced. Um, like I said, this is one of the best blades, uh, and it's made by two of my close friends. That's wonderful. Yeah, a lot of meaning to it. Well, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys for watching. You guys will be able to, we'll have some links to be able to check out these knives at bladehq.com. And uh, make sure to keep following us for SHOT Show on our 2019 SHOT Show playlist here on YouTube. Hey, I got the